gentle people and welcome to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I'd appreciate it if you haven't already done so that you hit that subscribe button. It's almost mid-October so we are well into fall or autumn. Uh, you know that cozy season is finally here. And many of you and your friends are updating your homes with new fall decor. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I make seasonal napkin rings. Uh, initially, I began by making my napkin rings out of ceramic tile. Voila. And attaching them to the rings, but discovered that these were really pretty heavy. And so now my napkin rings are entirely made of resin. I currently have a Shopify store, Sparrow Art Vibes, and an Etsy store, Sparrow Art Vibes Shop. And in an effort to grow my business, I'm beginning to use more tools, especially the free ones. For example, I've started reviewing the trends that Etsy forecasts each year. And at the beginning of the year, they said that the color emerald green was going to be the hot color for 2022. And in late August, I reviewed the Etsy Marketplace Insights 2022 Fall Trends. And as you can see from the screen, I saw that bold color was a trend. The term cocooning shapes, that cocooning shapes, that fascinated me. Um, but they pointed out that uh, the trend is toward round edges. And the fall color included rich brown hues. So in creating the napkin rings for this fall, I chose a round shape. And then I Googled, I actually Googled um, fall green color palettes to find a green, since emerald green is it, and a brown color palette. Uh, and you can see some of the examples that I came up with. So I'm excited to share this really pretty quick, um, easy to do uh, tutorial on how to make resin napkin rings. Again, you can use these during the holidays or you can use them at any other time of the year. So just giving you a sense of what they might look like. Glitter, glitter, crushed glass. Okay, so I'm going to take these samples off the table and then we're going to do our materials and we'll make some napkin rings. Okay, so in order to make our napkin rings we need two things. One, uh, my pop socket uh, mold and that's the little things that go on the back of your cell phone to hold and then this is the ring mold I actually made this myself from silicone uh, purchased some napkin rings bought the silicone poured it in a pan put the rings in it and so now I make all of my own rings and of course my go-to resin is the craft smart and that's primarily because I always get coupons and it's far cheaper for me to use the coupons than it is to purchase these online. That's the part that's the part A resin and this is the part B hardener. And of course then we need some measuring cups. So since these are two small simple tasks we're just going to use two small measuring cups and I will be using four colors of resin so I have four paper cups, I have my four stir sticks, I have my nitrile gloves, and then the mica powders that I will be using are May Spring. All four are May Spring. I'll be using the Bronze Stone, the Golden Labradite, that's one of my favorites. The green pyromorphite and the white chalcedony. And to make these look a little fancier and a little more festive, I started out with glitter 
and then changed my mind and went into my drawer and I found some beads that I can use. So I am going to be using this, what's left over of this string of brown beads and what's left over of this string of gold beads. And we attach the tops to the rings using the E6000 clear, the transparent E6000. And that's that. Let me take all of this stuff off the table and then we'll get to mixing. Okay, so let's get started mixing our resin. Uh, as you know, I always mark on my container how much resin I need. This mold to do six rings requires 60 milliliters. So we're going to do 30 milliliters of part B. and 30 milliliters of part A. And as always, you mix according to the manufacturer's instructions. Craftsmart Resin says this should be mixed for a minimum of five minutes. So we're going to set our timer to five minutes and we are going to begin mixing. Okay, so now I'm going to divide the mixed resin into four cups. So we'll start with the white chalcedone. And these are such small amounts of resin, this is going to be a really short video because it doesn't take but a couple of minutes to mix this. So that's that. And then my absolute favorite color, the Golden Labradite. I just love this. Kind of weird when you're used to mixing large amounts of resin to then turn around and go to something this small and this simple. Mix this in just a couple of minutes. Our green. So the greens and the browns that Etsy said were the colors for the year and for the fall. Always make sure when you are mixing your mica powder into your resin 
that you scrape any mica powder that might be stuck on your stick off and into your cup. And our last color is the, what is this, bronze stone. And also make sure that you scrape any mica powder off the sides of your cup because a lot of it gets stuck. All right. And so then all we do, all we do is just take these four colors and just randomly pour them into these molds. There is no pattern, there is no rhyme, there is no reason. I just alternate the colors um, and that's it. I just alternate the colors to fill the molds. So here we go.
and this time we need 40 milliliters so we are going to do 20 20 and 20 so we need 20 milliliters of part B and 20 milliliters of part A Again, five minutes on our timer. So we have our same four cups that we used a little earlier and we're just going to divide this resin into these cups. Again, this is about the quickest, easiest um, project to do. Very simple. So we'll start with our green. And just like with the rings, there is no pattern to this, there's no rhyme, there's no reason. You're just pouring these colors randomly in the way that I guess makes you feel good. Or in the way that makes sense to you, I guess. That might be better. And again, we're only filling six of these because I have six rings. So I have six cups here. And I'll go across there. And I never pour all my resin at once. I always pour and then see what I have left and then go back and evenly distribute it. Okay, and so now we're just going to hit these with the heat gun to pop any air bubbles. And I'm using the heat gun to blend these colors a little bit.
and we'll let these set for about 20 minutes and then we'll come back in and we will add our stones add our beads to these to glam them up a little bit I am going to switch these in the back and move this to the front. Okay, so the idea behind waiting a few minutes is so that the resin thickens. Now these aren't really deep but you don't want your stones to just sink. You want your stones to be able to stay on top if you can. So again, that's sinking a little bit. That's dropping a little more than I want. So I'm going to give it another 10 minutes. And then we'll come in and again, we'll add some of these stones. But I don't like, that has, mm, that has actually gone right down. So it's almost, that's gone down. I don't like that. So we're going to wait a little bit longer. I'll be back in another 10-15 minutes. I did not like that those first stones sank when they were put in the resin so I waited a little bit and so now we're going to see if these yep this is the way we want it. That's the way we want it. Yeah, those first ones, they disappeared. <laughs> so we want them to be able to stand up and not sink.
Okay, so that's that. So we'll let these, I'll cover these and they will cure overnight. And then tomorrow we'll pop them out of these molds and just glue the two pieces together. Hello again gentle people. It is the next day. We are going to uncover these, unmold them, trim anything that needs to be trimmed, and then attach the tops to the rings. I don't know, the back sides are almost prettier than the front with the stones. And remember, I made this particular mold myself. Uh, <clears throat> Oops, this last one doesn't seem to want to have a life of its own. So none of the tops need to be trimmed. That's good, those are pretty. And on the rings, Okay, so these look like these can simply be finished with the deburring tool. Okay, and I'm just going to take my sanding sponge, sanding block, and just go over all of the outside edges. Then we're just going to wipe away any dust. I use the clear gloss varnish to go over those little inside edges right there. I'm trying to get the light. But if you don't have varnish and you have some clear lacquer nail polish, you can use that on those edges. And that's quick, it dries 
real fast. We'll take a little bit there and just run that along that inside edge. And then that little white area literally disappears. Now there's no way for you to tell that that was ever sanded. It's a quick little trick. E6000 and I like to just <clears throat> I like to set these back inside the mold as a way to hold them um, particularly where they have the stones on them it's hard to keep them level so at least if you put them back in the holder they'll stay <clears throat> they will stay straight and then we'll take some of our E6000 <clears throat> I mean and now you get to actually see what woo I got ah, yuck oh this is already coming out the tube oh that's messy some E6000 on that and then just Press that on there in the middle. And just be careful where because I have the stones on these <clears throat> they're not necessarily level so you're gonna have to come back and watch and make sure that your rings don't move that they don't slide out of position So once these dry, then we'll put them on some napkins so you can see how pretty they are. And that's that. <clears throat>